Hello, everybody. I am so happy to be here. Um, thank you all for coming. I know this was announced back in the summer, and uh, but we're here now, and I'm excited to be here. Uh, I, I feel so honored uh, to have this opportunity. I came here four years ago as a player development coach, um, not knowing where I was going to go in the future. And each year, I got, I grew and got better and better. I had my eyes on this possible opportunity. Um, and now, last season, being part of Coach Brown's staff, I feel that I have the support. I need to be successful in this new role. Um, but again, I, I'm really thankful and extremely excited and, and here to answer any questions that any of you guys have. Lindsay, so much has been made about how few females have been professional basketball coaches in the States, but I believe you're the first black female to be a head coach in the G League. What does that mean to you to be breaking that barrier? It's, um, you just want to coach and you just, you know, as a player, you just want to play and you just want to coach, but you have to like, I think I just sat back and it, uh, after I was given, I mean, this opportunity, I sat back and I was like, wow, this really is something. And it's not just that this organization entrusted me with this, this responsibility, the belief they had in me. Um, it's really good to be part of something that they see and they see the growth and they're giving you that opportunity. Um, but I know now, because I have young girls now in college and high school saying, I want to coach in the NBA. And when I was that age, I didn't even know that this was an opportunity. So it's great that I feel that I'm just able to follow my dreams to get this opportunity and, and open up doors, hopefully for the future. Yes, this is an opportunity, and I'll piggyback off of what Chris said, because in the last 50, 55 years, there have been, you know, black coaches that had elevated, whether in uh, college or uh, the NBA. And I'm talking about Marion E. Washington, who was the first Division I uh, black female college 50, 51 years ago, and Title IX made that happen. I just want to get your thoughts, not, on, not only on her accomplishment, but uh, – the opportunities that Title IX has offered, you know, women, black women and women overall. You just want to get equal opportunity. You just want to be seen. You want to be seen as, as equal and, and, and like really given the, the opportunity to grow. Like you just can't jump in this position to be a coach. Someone has to give you an opportunity way back to learn and to grow. And I think there are people out there that just see you and see your talent. They don't care that you are a woman and they want to give you these opportunities. Title IX has been amazing by, I think, opening people's eyes and saying, hey, we're here, they can do it too. So being sitting here and part of this, uh, obviously part of Title IX, playing in, in women's college basketball and being able to have that opportunity, um, I, I've been the beneficiary of it. It's been great. Hi, Lindsay. Hi. How much will your basketball philosophy align with Mike Brown and the big team and everything? We would like to think we are an extension of the Sacramento Kings. Um, I would like a seamless transition for players that are going to be going back and forth with that. Um, you know, he, he talks a lot about, about playing together as a team, playing physical, playing fast, and that's exactly what we're going to do as well. Um, I might have my own little style and flair to it, but <laughs> it's going to be pretty similar with that. He's been very, very clear. Yeah, Lindsay, uh, two quick for you real quick. Um, the first one just... Coaching in general, um, following your player in playing days, when, how quickly did that become on your radar that, that that was something you wanted to do? Oh, really? Not at all. Yeah. I actually, I actually, I was told by my college coach years ago, I'd be a great coach and I thought she was crazy. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. When I thought NBA, I thought of more, maybe front office. Um, and I started off as a scout. I worked in league office and then I was a scout. And I had an opportunity to be a player development coach when I was with Philadelphia. And I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I, I didn't expect to get here where I am years later, but I just kind of followed that path and I enjoyed it. Yeah, and speaking of that, just Philadelphia, being on Luke Walton's staff, being with Mike Brown's staff, what were you able to take from maybe each individual spot that you can apply going forward in your coaching career? Each individual, that's a great question. Uh, first, <laughs> first starting, I had like Brett Brown. And I was like, knew nothing about the NBA. He was very open. He had his, his, his office open anytime. Um, I think him giving me the opportunity to like ask and share and um, he didn't put me in the box, if that makes sense. You know, sometimes you're nervous and you don't want to say anything. He would call me over, ask what I think. 
and it was really cool to tell him something and to see him actually do it. I don't know if he did it on purpose or if he fully believed in it, but it gave me confidence. So I, I love that. Coming here with, um, when Luke Walton brought me here, it was my first time doing scouts. Really like learning the process of how to do that, understanding that different coaches, different teams, different people, they do it in, in several ways. And um, each year it was done differently, but that helped me grow as far as like even having a voice in front of the team. And then now here with, with Coach Brown, um, Man, how much time you got? Um, it, it's it's been a lot. Um, he's sitting here in the back of the room, but like it's it's for one that shows you the support that our head coach is standing right here for this press conference in the back of the room. But um, I think he's on my speed dial. I can text him whether it is about basketball or about other personal things. Um, any questions I have, he's there to to give an answer. If he um, and, and he's the kind of leader that he doesn't care if you are a video person or um, have this much experience or none at all. If you have something to say and he likes it, he will use it. And I think that gives so many people confidence. If he doesn't like something, he'll tell you that too. But that also makes you better. Um, but I have to say, and I will say this directly to you, Coach Brown, you have given me so much confidence last season to be in this position now because I know no matter what, you guys have my back. Hey, Lindsay, um, back here. Do you consider yourself a trailblazer? I've been called that before. Um, I, I, when you think about it, I, th I think I am. I think I am. When I'm just coaching, you don't think about any of that. You go, you do your job. Uh, but when you take the time and you really sit and, and think about it, I mean, how many women look like me that do this? I didn't have this when I was a kid. I didn't have someone that looked like me that was doing this that I could say, hey, I want to do it. I think a lot of these young men, I mean, they're so lucky. They, they, they're able to see somebody and see the path to get there. I don't really know the path to get to the highest level. I'm just kind of making it as I go. So I guess trailblazer might be the, the word for it. Hi, Lindsay. Congratulations on your accomplishment. Back there you go. I wanted to ask, have you spoken to any other women around the league, whether that be Becky Hammond and, and her experience and what advice did she give you? And, and if you haven't spoken to maybe someone in her role, uh, whether that's your family or your mom or so, so a woman that you look up to that gave you advice that you stick with? I, I've known Becky since the, my years playing the WNBA. So like I talked to her when I first got in the NBA and she talked a lot about her experiences, giving me little nuggets uh, about um, you know, just, just kind of her experience and things that can help get me ahead. Um, I remember her telling me at my first summer league, this was years ago, she's like, stick with it, we need more women here. Um, for one, I just want to congratulate her on her second championship back to back. That is big time and that also says what kind of coach she is. Uh, but no, we we've definitely have, have spoken in the past about it. And um, yeah, I, I, just, I just know that I want to be also open for other women that's coming up that may have any questions uh, moving forward because she definitely helped me. Lindsay, you, you mentioned how much you love coaching now. W what do you love about coaching? I think the, uh, the, the, the teaching part of it, I mean, it's, it's all teaching, right? Um, we all learn differently. We all, um, you know, kind of absorb things differently. But, you know, I come from like, from the court and being able to my approach is as a, as a former player at times. I remember being in certain situations. I remember feeling certain things from being the starter, the, the star number one pick to being injured and never playing. So I feel that I have that understanding, but when you've worked so hard with a player throughout my year and something and maybe their contract is coming to an end and they're stressed and then you see them get an extension or you see them get an opportunity elsewhere or uh, you see a player like bet on themselves and then two years later they get a big deal. It is such a great feeling to know that you're one of the coaches that they pick up the phone and call. That they call and they say, oh, I got this. I'm so excited. Thank you. So I, I think that's probably like the best, the best part of it. Hey, Lindsay, congratulations. Thank um, you. You mentioned that you kind of had the idea of eventually being a G League head coach for a little while. When did that first come on your radar? And what did you need to do to progress from that point to where you're at now? I, at first I thought it was like a pretty cool opportunity. You know, the G League has about half the players in the, the NBA played there. A lot of the coaches coach there. Referees have to go through there. I, I felt that that would be 
part of the path of my continual to grow uh, as a coach. I can't remember the like exact time uh, when it was, but I feel like maybe a few years ago, it was kind of like, huh, that could be a great opportunity. Um, but I, I kind of sat there to see what opportunities opened for me. It wasn't like, this is the exact thing that I want to do. If it opened, if the opportunity present, presented itself to me and I was in the right position, had the right support, had the confidence I felt, uh, I, I, I would, I would want to take it. But I also understand that there's not many people that look like me doing this. Like, there's no one. So I have to have a, a level of confidence and support to do this. Hey. Hi. What is your style and flair? What is that? You don't see the bling? I see the bling. You don't see the bling? I got it on my shoes, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, a style and flair. Huh. Well... Not that there are so many, look, okay, put it this way. With the G League, I feel like you can experiment a little bit more than maybe you would here. Uh, so there will be some opportunities, whether it's defensively or offensively, trying to do something a little different. But as a whole, we're going to be the extension of, of, of the Kings. But, um, you know, I wish I could wear this, but we're still going to be wearing the same outfits as, <laughs> as everybody else. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Congratulations, Lindsay. Thank you. Uh, you know, we talked a lot about you becoming this trailblazer and shattering that glass ceiling and, you know, paving the way. I'm curious, if you can go back and tell 16-year-old or 17-year-old Lindsay Harden something about this journey that you've embarked on, what would you tell that young girl? Another good question. What would I tell myself? <sighs> I'd say... Just like set really high goals. I think even goals where people think that you might be crazy, even though it's something that might have never been done before. When you set something so, so high and you're reaching and reaching for it, so many more opportunities open up. And some of those opportunities might be the one that you're supposed to be, be going towards. And I think if you set things low, like, oh, this is easy, I can do it. Um, you don't really get to reach your, your full potential. And I would also say being uncomfortable is where you want to be. The moment you're comfortable and you're there, you're not really expanding and growing. You should at some level feel a little bit uncomfortable in a sense of what you're doing. And I kind of felt that as a player. And those are the moments that I felt that I showed greatness as a player when I was uncomfortable and able to push through that and win certain games or push through the uncomfortable. Like I, I felt like my, I was gonna collapse because I was tired. So I, I think those are things of, of setting high goals and pushing through uh, moments where you are uncomfortable um, in doing so. Lindsay, not to put the cart too far in front of the horse, but you talked about this being the next step. And, and so what, what is the step after this? What is the ultimate goal? Is it WNBA head coach? Is it a college men's head coach? Is it head coach in the NBA? What, what is the ultimate goal for you, even though I know you said you don't want to just pigeonhole yourself to just one thing? What are you wanting? Winning a championship. That's really where my mind is right now. No, uh, I, I mean, I, I'm so excited about this opportunity. Like, I'm so excited about this opportunity right here. Would I love to keep going and be a, a head coach at another level? Maybe. But right now, this is my focus. This is my goal. This is where my mind is, and this is what I'm going to put all my effort and energy on. After this year, how everything goes, ask that question to me again, and we'll see where it goes from there. But right now, I want to see where this goes, how far we can go, how many players I can help to help this team so we can all you know, win a championship. Lindsay, I know that you are about the work, and you're driven, you're determined, and you partnering with Anjali to, to be the first-led team by women, both on the coaching side and the front office side. How has the process been starting it in terms of working together, setting goals, and, and the transition into the new role? I have to tell you, Anjali has been amazing. She has been on it. I mean, I feel like since I got this job, <laughs> um, she's been on my phone every single day, all day. <laughs> Um, because she's really excited for this opportunity. And we also aren't taking it for granted. We understand the weight of this. We both do. We can't just be good, we have to be great. We both understand that. So her starting early, and, and, it, and it was really big because the first thing she talked to me about was being transparent. 
She wanted to have open dialogue about players, about situations, wanting to know what I thought, even wanting to know what, what my staff thinks about certain players, style that I want to play or we want to play. And it has just been really great to, to do this with her because she has, I have to tell you, she has worked so hard. I think it was, did you text me at four in the morning? <laughs> it was at four thirty this morning, but um, it, it's just it's just really been great. This is my first time experience. This. I I really didn't know what to expect, um, but really having that like open dialogue with her throughout this process has, has been great. I oh, I did have one more if you don't mind. Sure. Just real quick. Uh, this organization that made some bold moves. Uh, yeah, there was a all women female broadcast team just a couple of years ago, you know, during COVID. And now, you know, with you two coming in here, which is extraordinary, monumental. Uh, what, what is your thought about the, the Sacramento Kings, Stockton Kings organization overall? Let's be clear, I'm not the first female to coach here either. I think I'm the third to, to be here. They've always done it. They've always seen a coach as a coach, whether you are a man or a woman, and they've always given opportunity. They're not just handing out something, you gotta come and you gotta do your work. But if you do your work and you're good, you will get opportunity. I think it has gone through our front office, that's how they do it. And being a part of that and, and, and seeing that, I mean, why wouldn't this be the organization to do this? If you really look at the past and the history of what they've done, like why not? This was, uh, I don't think even like a blink of an eye for them. So I, I feel really lucky to be a part of it. And that for them, the biggest part is just the, the growth and opportunity that they're giving people within the organization to get opportunities, I think is really huge. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.